All right, welcome back to episode 162 of Chaotically Intolerant. We have Michael and Max Chadwick is back talking the NFL draft. I promised it last week, and he's back. Um, it was a really interesting NFL draft. We all know that. Maybe we'll talk a little little bit about the Tom Brady roast at the top, um, but make sure to like, comment, subscribe, go over to um, – it was the college football, pro football show. Is that right? Yeah, the PFF College Football Show, yeah. PFF College Football Show, go over and subscribe to that and go over to Draft America. Go check that out. I think you have an email list. Is that correct, Michael? I, uh, yes, I think so. Yeah. And make sure and do all that, and uh, let's let's go. All right, so the NFL draft. The, uh, this is first off, people are equating this to the 1983 NFL draft because of all the quarterbacks taken. Um, I don't think the talent is there whatsoever compared to to that draft. You know that draft with John Elway and Dan Marino. Um, but what is your overall? I mean, who who do you think lost the draft to start? I, I want to start with the negative. Oh, good question. Who lost the draft? Uh, man, ja- Jacksonville made some interesting picks. Uh, Trent Baalke seems to be walking to the beat of his own drum in a lot of ways. Uh, he kind of reached on a lot of players, I thought. I liked Ron Thomas Jr. in the first round. I think that was a solid pick. But uh, uh, other ones they made were kind of weird. So they, they were solid. I don't think they really lost it. Uh, Atlanta, uh, it's very head-scratching what Atlanta was doing this draft. I mean, that Michael Penix Jr. pick was maybe the most shocking pick I've ever seen. Now, I like Penix, and I think he – Taking number eight overall is not crazy, but just for Atlanta, who just paid Kirk Cousins 100, over $100 million to be their quarterback, a little weird. Um, and especially for a new head coach and new general manager, like it makes no sense when you're trying to win now and win that division right now and you're making a pick for three years from now. It doesn't really make too much sense. And I also, I hated, hated them uh, taking Rukororo, trading up for Rukororo at 35 overall. I thought that was a reach. And also the guy taken right after him, Johnny Newton, um, who, in my opinion, was the, by far the best D-tackle in the draft, was still on the board at 35, and yet you go with Ruka Roro. So I hated that. That was that was even worse than the Penix pick, honestly, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, I was surprised the biggest loser was probably Atlanta. Atlanta made a lot of head-scratching picks, especially the, their first two, I think, of, of Penix and Ruka Roro were uh, ones I didn't like at all. And if you don't nail your first two picks, you're probably going to have a pretty bad, bad draft, honestly. So, Do you think – that they made that pick assuming that Kirk wouldn't finish his contract? Uh, I think it's possible. I think it's possible that his Achilles is not going as planned. I, I think, you know, maybe he's not recovering as, as well as they thought, and they think, okay, you know, if we, we want to get another plan in, in action here. Um, it was weird. You know, they kept saying – they kept bringing up the Jordan Love-Aaron Rodgers situation and how that worked out for Green Bay. But, man, it's just like – it's just for Raheem Morris, who's like not – entrenched like if, if Reed Morris was like say Andy Reid um and like he's not getting fired anytime soon fine then if you want to take a, a pick that you're either going to be you know three years down the line but it's like dude in today's day and age of NFL if you're not winning within one two years you're out of there so for him to make a pick that he's like assuming that he's going to be there three years from now is like that's a big a big uh big swing and obviously it could work out and again I love Penix I don't think I don't think the pick of him is, is that crazy at number eight overall but I just think that for that team, it doesn't really make too much sense. So maybe it's a little bit of that with Kirk Cousins. Uh, maybe his Achilles is not doing that well. Obviously, Kirk Cousins is an older quarterback anyways. Um, but, yeah, just for them, a win-now team like the Falcons, for them to make a, a pick that's a future pick is, is very head-scratching, to say the least. And, and especially, I think, which I, I actually wasn't as against the Michael Penix pick as I think a lot of people are, just because – I, I am assuming that they're worried about Cousins. They're worried about his ability to stay healthy over the next couple of years. And it, I think there was an opt-out at some point in his contract as well a couple of years down the line. But it really did boggle me because Penix is one of the older quarterbacks in this draft. It's not like he's one of the younger guys. He's, what, 23? Am I right about that? Yeah, he'd be like 24. He's a six-year player. So he's probably like 24 years old right now, yeah. Yeah, he's 23. He turns 24 on May 8th. So he'll, he'll be entering the season at 24. I could have understood taking like a Joe Milton because I I'm I, I don't know if you remember, I'm super high on Joe Milton as a quarterback. He can throw an orange over 100 yards in the air. Um, he's got a fucking cannon. He just can't hit anything else, can't do anything else with the football. 
but I think that's something you can train. And I think that would have been a perfect fit for, for Atlanta, but not at the eighth pick. Who do you think they should have taken at the eighth pick? Uh, good question. I think, I think, um, two guys come to mind with that. I think one of them is Laiatu Latu, the edge defender from UCLA, who ended up going 15th overall to the Colts. Um, I thought he was the best edge in the draft. Atlanta has been pretty terrible at pass rush for the last half decade, basically. Uh, so that would have made a lot of sense to me to take him, who I think is the most advanced pass rusher I've seen come out of college in a very long time. Um, he was the best defensive player in college football this past year. So that would have made a lot of sense. I also would not have hated Roman Dunze at number eight. If you want to go full scorched earth and say, hey, let's get the best offense in football, that could be really fun because you get Roman Dunze, you get Drake London, you get Kyle Pitts, you get Bijan Robinson, you have Kirk Cousins, and you have maybe the best offensive line in football. Um, and a former PFF employee, Zach Robinson, is their new offensive coordinator too. Um, that would have been a lot of fun. And I, I, you could make a really good argument that the Falcons would have the best offense on paper in the NFL if you get Roman Dunze in there as well. So if you want to go full scorched earth to get Roman Dunze, I would have loved that. Or Laiatu Latu, if you want to really help out that pass rush, I would have loved that as well. So those are the two players, if I was Atlanta, that I would have been targeting at number eight overall. But they, uh, they have different, uh, different viewpoint, I think, than, uh, than most of us. What, who, I guess besides Chicago, who was your biggest winner? Because I feel like it's unfair to rank the, you know, the number one pick because you're always going to say they were the biggest winner. Yeah, I think Chicago, I mean, Chicago did ace the ninth pick with Roma Duse. I, I kind of went into that night thinking, you know, Caleb obviously is the, the pick at one. But at nine, I, the, the one I most want for Chicago is Roma Duse. And he luckily fell to them at number nine. So that was great. <laughs> I would say the Steelers really aced the draft in the second straight year. They went into it with a major need at offensive line, um, specifically left tackle and they end center, and they fixed it immediately with getting Troy Fautanu out of Washington, number 20. You got Zach Frazier in the second round. You got you need help receiver, too. You got Roman Wilson in the second round or on day two as well, which is a really good pick. Uh, Peyton Wilson, top linebacker in the draft, who obviously has some serious medical concerns. Um, I think it was reported that he actually doesn't even have an ACL in one of his knees. But on the field, on the field, he is the best linebacker in the draft. He's an absolutely stellar athlete. So uh, getting him late day three, or late day two, excuse me, uh, was a steal as well. Because I, I think on the field, he's a first-round talent. It's just the medicals. It was what dropped him, I think, 98 overall. So um, if he stays on the field, I think the Steelers got the best linebacker in the draft at you know, late third round. So I think that's a really, really good pick as well. So, yeah, I, think, I thought Pittsburgh really aced the draft. It was like the second straight year I really thought they aced the draft too. So they're, they're killing it right now, honestly. Very famous uh, Steeler did not have an ACL, Heinz Ward also. True. So, Another Steeler. Steelers thing, yeah. Legend. <laughs> Works out. Um, so the number two pick, Jaden Daniels, Heisman winner, quarterback. He's got that weird, weird elbow, weird-looking elbow. Uh, oh, what, how, how are you feeling about Jaden Daniels? I, I know – Apparently, Washington wasn't even thinking about Drake May. They would have rather looked at um, J.J. McCarthy over Jaden or over Jaden Daniels, but obviously they went with Jaden Daniels. Yeah, uh, I would have. I disagree with it. I, I thought they should have gone Drake May. Now, if they're deciding between Jaden Daniels and J.J. McCarthy, definitely made the right call there. Uh, I like Jaden Daniels a lot. Obviously, he's the best quarterback in college football this past year. Uh, he's probably the best rusher we've seen in the quarterback position since Lamar Jackson. You know, Washington fans are going to see. Uh, Guy is a lot similar to like Robert Griffin III, who they saw a decade ago or whatever. So um, hopefully he can stay healthier than, than Robert Griffin III because that's what killed his career. But, yeah, I like his fit in the Cliff Kingsbury offense. Obviously, Cliff has worked with mobile quarterbacks before with, with Kyler Murray. Um, so I like the fit there. Um, I just I would have gone with Drake May, who I think has been a safer quarterback. I think he is has a bigger arm than Jane Daniels, and I also think he's been elite for two years, whereas Jane Daniels took it to year five to be elite. Um, but again, I don't hate Jane Daniels at number two uh, as much as I would have hated, say, Jason McCarthy at number two overall. Um, so I think they made the right call if it was between those two players. But yeah, I, I, I like Jane Daniels. I think he'll be an electric quarterback for them pretty quickly um, and should be one of the top rushing quarterbacks in the league immediately, honestly. What is the big, what is the difference between being a really, really good quarterback in college versus the NFL? Because if, if you told me, hey, this guy won the Heisman, and he's, you know, he's the best player in college football, he should be the number one pick every single year. If, if you just think about the concept of it, obviously that's not how it works out. Tim Tebow won a Heisman, and we know what he was as a quarterback. He had, he had a great playoff game against the Steelers. That was pretty much it. Um, but what, what is that big jump? Is it just that, that NFL open versus college open? Is it just the speed? What, what is it? 
Yeah, I think there's a few things. Obviously, traits are a huge part of the NFL draft evaluation. Um, you can't just look at college tape and say it's going to project to the NFL. And you want to look at supporting casts in college. And Jaden had a very good supporting cast. Again, it's another argument for Drake May is that Drake May elevated a bad North Carolina offense. Jaden Daniels had two first-round receivers and maybe two first-round tackles next year, uh, too, protecting him. So, uh, yeah, I think you look at that. Um, like I said, traits, age is another thing you got to look at, uh, too. I'm trying to think what else. It's, it's, it's a lot of different things that go into being a great college player versus being a great NFL player. This, like I said, the speed of the game is way different uh, than it is in the NFL. You can't really get away with not being a great passer in college football, so that's why Tim Tebow never really worked out because he was a great runner, don't get me wrong. But, I mean, he just – throwing the football was never really one of his strengths, and <laughs> that guy got exposed uh, in the NFL level. But, yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of different things that, that go into it. Obviously, being a great college quarterback is almost a – you know, requisite for being a starting NFL quarterback. But uh, there's definitely – I think it's more trait space than people might imagine, honestly, which is why you've seen some guys who struggled in college uh, be good NFL players and some guys that were great college players just can't do anything in the NFL. So it's kind of a – it's an interesting dynamic, honestly, with it. How do you feel the Patriots did this year? I mean, especially – I mean, you you know you're going to have to surround Drake May with – a competent offense. The you can't fail him like North Carolina failed. Him. No, uh, and I'm, I am worried they're going to do that uh, because their situation there is pretty terrible, and that's the one situation out of any of the six uh, that took a first round quarterback that I was really worried about. But I think you made the right call tra- taking Drake May there. I would not. Pr- I probably would not have traded the pick unless you got an absolute haul from someone. I probably wouldn't have been willing to give up that pick just because you also need a franchise quarterback. And I am a huge believer in Drake May. I think he, at the, in the right situation, he could be a Justin Herbert type of quarterback in the NFL. Um, so I think you made the right call there. And then obviously they, they did their best to surround Drake May with talent. You got Jalen Polk in the second round, Javon Baker in the uh, fourth round. Um, those are two receivers I like in this draft and two guys that, you know, Drake May, sometimes he has bouts of inaccuracy and Polk and uh, Baker have proven that they can haul in targets that are inaccurate you know so i think that's a those are two good fits i think for that offense they're not alpha number one receivers and they really desperately need an alpha number one receiver in that offense the other problem is the offensive line is still not great either and i i I really did not like the pick of caden wallace in the third round at number 68 overall for a couple reasons uh one caden wallace thought was always a solid player for penn state at right tackle never a really great one so taking him in the third round to begin with i think was a major reach and then second of all I mean, you need you have a right tackle already, and and you need a left tackle. Caden Wallace has never played left tackle at Penn State, and now you're all of a sudden you're projecting him to to be your starting left tackle in the NFL. So you're projecting a guy who I thought was a good, not great right tackle in college to a starting left tackle in the NFL. That scares me, especially when he's going to be starting probably day one for the Patriots. So I, I really dislike that pick. But getting Polk and, and Baker, I thought was two solid picks, and Jaheim Bell seventh round as well. I thought was a really really good value for them as well. So. Um, yeah, there, it's going to take some time. It's going to take time. There's still it's going to take a few years for them to start around Drake May with enough talent, but uh, they're they're trying at least right now, which is something that they really need to do. Because I I really do love Drake May, and I think he should have been the number two overall pick. And in a lot of other years, he'd be the number one overall pick. Um, so I think Patriots getting him at three, I thought was a pretty good value for them. Arizona Cardinals, they take Marvin Harrison at four. They actually got a haul in this draft. They got a lot. They got a lot in the third round. They took four players in the third round. Um, Harrison, I mean, I, I assume this means Kyler is there for, for the long haul. Like he's going to be there. There was a little bit of speculation around, Hey, are they maybe going to try and dump him? I know he has a big contract. Um, how do you feel they address those needs? They did an okay job. Uh, Harrison was a pretty no, no, uh, no brainer there at number four. So you got your number one receiver for the future. Um, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, that was their biggest need and they got a once in a decade type of talent in Marvin Harrison Jr. So that was great. Uh, I really didn't love the Darius Robinson pick at number 27 overall. To me, he's more of a late second rounder. Um, so they, they've reached there at 27. Um, Max Melton at 43, again, a little bit of a reach for me. Isaiah Adams is a solid player. Tip Ryman reach, I thought. You know, they, they did an okay job. I, I don't think um, they, they could have done they could have done a lot better, I thought, in a lot of their day two and day three picks. But, again, you got Marvin Harrison Jr., so it's hard for me to hate your draft when you get that guy. Um, but otherwise, I thought they did – an okay job in the draft. So they addressed their needs, definitely, which is something that was gets good because they, they needed an edge defender. They got him. They got Darius Robinson and Xavier Thomas. They needed help at uh, at pass catcher. They got Marvin Harrison Jr. They got uh, Tijon Palmer. They got Tip Ryman. It's just like in the corner they, they addressed as well. 
problem is just I don't love the players they really took to address those needs. So I, I don't think they really fixed a lot of their needs, but they did add a lot of players at those needs. So that's good. It's the fact that they still address their needs is good, and, and adding bodies to that room is good. But I just I, I didn't love a lot of their picks they made. So um, I, I think they did a solid job. I don't think it was anything spectacular, though. The, I think their philosophy is you take enough players – some of them have to work out just by odds. <laughs> True. So they have to, right? They can't not, um, which who knows? Maybe that works as a philosophy. I don't know. Um, I, lo- I I really like the Chargers draft. Um, taking Joe Alt, obviously offensive tackles to Jim Harbaugh are skill positions. And then taking Ladd McConkey with the second pick in the second round. I love I love Ladd McConkey coming out of Georgia. Um, you lose a lot of weapons with, with Herbert, and they are going in, into that soft rebuild. Um so what? How, how did you? How did you guys feel about that? I liked it. I thought they did a good job. I think uh, Alt at five uh, surprised a lot of people. It really shouldn't when you know who Jim Harbaugh is. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love his quote about you know we everyone wanted us to get a weapon. We did get a weapon. Joel also an offensive weapon. I think it's true. I mean Joel also I think he's the best tackle prospect since Panay Sewell, and he's one of the better ones we've seen in recent memory, honestly. So value wise, I think it's a great pick. And then also. You, I, I think it's important to look at these drafts wholesale after they're over because you look at Joe Alt and Ladd McConkey. I'd much rather have that than Malik Neighbors and Kingsley Suomatia at 34 overall. So yeah. um, they made the right call there because you got, you know, your franchise now right tackle probably in Joe Alt because Rashawn Slater is your left tackle. And then you got Ladd McConkey, who I, I think is a first round caliber talent. You got him in the second round as well. So, like I said, I, I'd much rather have that than getting Malik Neighbors and then a second round tackle. And at that point, at 34 overall, all the good tackles are gone by then. So um, I thought they did a good job in, in doing that. And I like some of their other picks. Junior Colson was a great pick, I think, as well. Brendan Rice in the seventh round made no sense to me. I thought he should go way higher than that. He should be like a fourth or fifth round pick. Um, so that's a great pick by them in the seventh round. Um, so yeah, I thought they did a pretty good job overall. And a lot of uh, a lot of players I like. So I, yeah, the Chargers did a really good job in this draft for the first Jim Harbaugh draft. It, it really looks like he just took he, Notre Dame, which Notre Dame, like, you're never going to go wrong, at least when it comes to defense, and uh, a lot of teams that were competing for the national championship. Yep. Pretty much. They took Michigan, Georgia, and Alabama, and then, you know, USC and Troy, but uh, definitely smart to do that, I guess. Uh, but Malik Neighbors going to the Giants. Oh, what? Right. oh, I was going to say, well, what did you think of the Giants draft? Did they get Malik Neighbors at six, and then... Uh, they didn't get a quarterback. I thought maybe they would get somebody to add to that quarterback room, but they did not actually select one. Were you surprised about that? No, not really. I, I think there's a huge drop-off after the top six to the next one, as you saw. The next quarterback taken after the 12th overall was in the fifth round. So NFL clearly viewed those top six as like, okay, we got to take this guy high, and that's why they all went in the top 12. Um, and then Spencer Rattler went in the fifth round. So, I mean, if you took Spencer Rattler, it's almost like, cool like i don't think that fixes your problem at quarterback at all it just adds another piece to it um so that doesn't really surprise me at all i mean honestly at that point it's like okay i don't think it's worth taking a guy if you're not gonna get one of the top six guys so um and i and i don't think they should have taken any of the uh other quarterbacks at number six overall. they shouldn't have taken Penix, Knicks, or mccarthy either so they made the right call taking malik neighbors that was their, probably their biggest need uh was wide receiver and they got the, the number two receiver in the draft in my opinion i love tyler newbin um great player in the second round they got um, Theo Johnson is an interesting piece. They got in the fourth round, one of the most athletic Titans we've ever seen. I love Tyrone Tracy, the running back out of Purdue. They got in the fifth round. Um, he just started playing running back this past season uh, after being receiver for most of his career at Iowa and then Purdue. And his first year at running back, he was one of the best running backs in the country. So if that guy's just getting started, like looking like that, he's got a high ceiling. And I think he's a fifth round player but I think he could be the number one running back for the Giants pretty quickly because, you know, obviously losing Saquon Barkley. They, they need a, a true number one running back, and I think Tyrone Tracy could absolutely be that. So he, he was one of my favorite sleepers in the draft, and I thought Giants scooping him up was great. So, yeah, they got some really good players. I really thought Malik Neighbors, Ty, Tyler Newbin, Tyrone Tracy, three of my favorite players in the draft. Honestly, the t- Giants got all three of them. So uh, really, really solid draft for the Giants all around. Um, the Titans, I felt like they needed to address the wide receiver position a little more. Uh, I feel like, obviously, they needed an offensive lineman, but did you think they should have taken, like, a, a Romo Dunes, um, yeah, at that seven spot? Maybe. I wouldn't have hated that. I think, uh, obviously, you got um, you got Calvin Ridley there. You got DeAndre Hopkins there, but those are both older players. I like, I wouldn't have hated that, and they really got uh, 
I, I was surprised that Joe Alt wasn't there for them at seven. That's kind of been the pick that everyone's kind of penciling in for them is Joe Alt. And mm-hmm. he just, they got sniped. The, you know, the, the Chargers took him out, uh, they pulled the rug out from under their feet, basically. So um, I, I don't love the J.C. Latham pick at all. I thought that was a big reach, especially with the other tackles on the board. I, I would have traded down if I were them, if you could, if you could have done it. Um, just because I thought it was worth taking a tackle more than the teens than it was taken at number seven after Joe Alt. Um, but if you're going to go tackle, I would have preferred a guy like Olu Fashionu from Penn State uh, or Talisa Falanga from uh, from Oregon State. I'd rather prefer them than, than J.C. Latham at number seven. I think that was really uh, a big reach for me, at least. So didn't love that. Uh, Tavondre Sweat at 38 was a lot higher than I thought he was going to go. Now I like him, and I think 30 overall is about – where I would have taken him on the field, but obviously he's got you know, significant off-field questions with the, the DWI he got just a few a month ago, um, and he had some some partying issues before, conditioning issues. And he's like 360 pounds. He reportedly he's been like close to like 380 at, at times during his career. So I, I like him a lot. He's a great player. He's the best tee tackle in the country last year. But this is some off-field stuff that you got to fix up. But on the field, I mean, he's a really really good player. But um, I like him. Um, and after that, I mean, it was just a whatever draft for the Giants. I mean, for the Titans, excuse me. Like, Cedric Gray is a solid player. Jarvis Brown is a solid player. Like, it's just not a lot of difference makers, I thought, in the draft. And like I said, with those, the first two picks of J.C. Latham and Tavondre Sweat went a lot higher than I expected them to go. So, didn't love the, the Titans draft overall, honestly. Yeah, they, they took one wide receiver in the sixth round, and that was it. I mean, I feel like they, they've been defined by either having old receivers or just nothing like absolutely nothing for will levis to throw to and i understand wanting to address the the offensive tat or the offensive line that's necessary but i feel like late in the late in the draft you want to take more receivers right like i feel like there were some wasted picks there Mm -hmm. yeah i agree with that Uh, and they signed tyler boyd uh, literally a few hours ago so um they have the starting three receivers now in, in ridley hopkins and tyler boyd but yeah, I think they got to get younger at that position. I think that's that's probably one of the you know they're probably going to be one of the five to ten worst teams in the NFL next year if you look at the betting odds. So a guy like Luther Burton the third or Tetero McMillan, like that will make a lot of sense for the Titans next year. Honestly, covered the we covered the Falcons. Uh, covered I think we covered the Bears. I mean, what what did you think about the Bears? I, I think the Bears killed it. They have a great offense right now. Yeah, they did a great job. They they got like I said, they got exactly who I wanted for them at, at number nine in Roma Dunze and got. Uh, you know, one of the best quarterback prospects I've ever seen in Caleb Williams. So uh, ace those two picks. Uh, Kieran Amagdaji, I like it in the third round. Um, funny enough, he's actually, he grew up a huge Bears fan, and he actually t- had some really funny tweets, you know, clowning the Bears, because obviously they've been a pretty bad franchise for a long time. So a lot of Bears fans already love the guy, because he's like, all right, this is one of us. Like, he's, he's one of us. He understands. So he's good. Uh, Torrey Taylor in the fourth round was a lot higher than I wanted, but he is the best punter in the draft. Um, then I think Austin Booker in the fifth round is a really, really good pick as well. I think he's a developmental edge defender. Don't think he'll be a starter opposite of Montez Sweat immediately, but he's a really good development piece uh, for them and it could potentially become a starter down the line. So getting him in the fifth round, Austin Booker out of Kansas, was a uh, a good pick as well. So overall, yeah, the Bears, like I said, they, they aced their first two picks. I really like the third pick of, of Amagaji. And then Austin Booker in the fifth round is a great pick as well. So, you know, four out of their five picks I really loved. And the other one was Torrey Taylor who's a punter but still like the best punter in the draft this year as well. So, you know, you got the QB one top three receiver, the number one punter, a really good developmental edge and uh, potentially a starting offensive lineman as well. I mean, the bears did a uh, really, really good job with this draft with uh, the Vikings. So they took JJ McCarthy at 10. Is there something I'm missing with JJ McCarthy? I I feel like at the start, like at at the end of the off season or at the beginning of the off season, he was projected to go in like the fourth round and he has shot up, I mean, he gets to, to a top 10 pick. Again, is that something I'm missing with this guy? I, I don't really see anything super special. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, he, he's kind of been rising this whole year. He's kind of like a second-round guy entering the season and then just rose from there. Um, he won the national championship, obviously, which is a big thing for a lot of teams. Um, he was great. He, he The problem with him is that just the quality, the quantity is not there, whereas it is for Caleb, Drake, you know, Jaden Daniels, Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr., they have a lot of dropbacks on tape that you can watch. He doesn't because they have a great running game and they have a great defense. Um, and they just didn't, really, they didn't need Jason McCarthy to carry the team, which is a good thing for a college team. It's like, all right, we don't want one player to have to carry the team because if he doesn't carry, if he, if he has an off game, then you're screwed. Uh, Michigan was lucky enough that they had so many ways they can go. If they needed to win one way, they could win that way. If they had to win another way, they could do that as well. 
Um, so he didn't really need to carry the team, but the problem with that with NFL projection is like, okay, now you're asking that guy to carry a team potentially. Um, can he do it? Uh, luckily for him, Minnesota is probably the best situation out of any rookie quarterback situation there is because you got the best receiver in the world, Justin Jefferson, a really good number two receiver in uh, Jordan Addison. TJ Hawkins is one of the best tight ends, a great offensive line headlined by two, two one of the best tackle duos in the league, honestly, and uh, Christian Darrisaw and Brian O'Neill, and then a, a genius offensive head coach and, and Kevin O'Connell as well. So great spot for him to be. Now it's all on him. Now it's a question of whether or not he could actually be uh, the face of a franchise and the go-to player for a team. We'll see. Um, I like his I like his upside. Um, it's just the floor. It might be a little bit lower than some of the other top quarterbacks in this draft just because we haven't seen it enough. When he's had the opportunity, he's taken advantage of it. Don't get me wrong, but he just hasn't done it as much as other guys have done it. So uh, that's why I was a little bit lower on him. I would have taken him mid to late first round. Um, but, you know, 10th overall, don't have to trade up to the top five like I thought you might have to get him. I don't hate that at all, honestly. So I, I think they did a pretty good job. Uh, and then the Jets. Uh, so they take Alou Fashunu out of Penn State, which they address that offensive line disaster that was last year, um, which they, they made some big signings as well in free agency this year. Um, I think it looks like they're preparing a little bit for a post-Aaron Rodgers world already, which is smart to me. Um, they take a wide receiver, two running backs, and a quarterback all in this draft. Um, Jordan Travis is like the big name here, you know, Say what you want about Florida State. They got their asses kicked in the Orange Bowl. Um, <laughs> and then they gave, you know, they gave out rings that said they were 13-0, which was the AC cha ACC championship ring. But still, um, how are you feeling about the Jets here? Well, first of all, I'm not going to take this Florida State slander, dude. They got screwed in the college football playoff this year. I, 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 whoa. They whoa, got screwed. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, whoa. This is, they this had, like, is... the 50th ranked strength of schedule in the country. No, their strength of record was, like, top four. So they still deserve to be in the college football playoff. But um, there's because one guy who got injured, I don't think it should be a reason why they got left out. And obviously that uh, Orange Bowl, people make fun of them for that. It's like, dude, literally the entire starting lineup, and I think all of the backups opted out of that game. So you're playing with, like, walk-ons out there against Georgia, which is, like, whatever. Um, they're so, quitters. No, they're quit. That, they're quit. no, no, no. You go out and prove them. No, you go out and prove no. and say, hey, middle finger – we're, we're better. We're just, we, no, we deserved it. Uh, no, I would respect them a lot more. There's so many players that opt out of bowl games. I'm not going to ever call a guy. Quite <laughs> doing that. But uh, no, I mean, listen, I mean, that the Jordan Travis pick, it's not, he's not a future starter for them. He's probably gonna be a long time backup in the NFL. Um, he just doesn't have, he doesn't have the arm strength, honestly, for the NFL, but he's a, he's a really, really good college quarterback. I think he would be a really good backup in the league. Uh, Olu Fashion, was a great pick um, at 10th overall or 11th overall, excuse me. Um, I think he could be a starting tackle for them down the line. They got Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses there um, who are older players only on one year contracts. And also both of them are kind of injury prone too. So Olu fashion might be, have to be a starting tackle immediately. I, I personally would have taken Brock Bowers there because uh, I think they're in win now mode, but I don't hate the pick of Olu fashion at all. I think it, it makes a lot of sense. So uh, overall, just did a pretty solid job. We got some guys I like in this draft, Malachi Corley, maybe a little bit higher than I would have taken him at 65, but still a, a fun player to have in that offense. Uh, and really good after the catch, which is something they need in that offense right now. Um, so yeah, the, the Jets did a pretty solid job. I don't think they really blew anything, blew anyone away, but got some uh, got some fun players in there as well. Braylon Allen, Isaiah Davis, Quantez Stiger is really cool story. Um, former CFL player, uh, never played a snap of college football, honestly, which is crazy. Um, it's an unbelievable story. I read up on him if you can because he's a really really cool, really cool story and great uh, great for him to get drafted in the NFL because that kid's been through a lot, but. Um, yeah, they, honestly, the Jets did a pretty solid job, I thought, in this draft. They don't, I don't think they, they blew me away, but I uh, got some really good players, which is what they need right now. Denver taking Bo Nix at 12. I think some people were stra scratching their heads about that, but I feel like Bo Nix is the best quarterback in that room. If, if you plug him in, he is the best quarterback in that room at this very moment. I think that's why they took him more than anything. Um, I didn't really mind it. I didn't think it was that bad. No, I, I thought it was fine, too. I, he was pretty clearly the number six quarterback for me, and they needed a quarterback, and the top five were gone. So at that point, it's like, all right, fine. Um, and also, like, it makes sense that uh, that Sean Payton loves the guy. And obviously, he there's been reports that came out that Sean Payton also loved Pat Mahomes coming out of the 2017 draft, and he apparently loved Bo as much as he did with Mahomes coming out, which is interesting to say the least. But uh, I think Bo fits what Sean Payton wants, and what one of the reasons why it didn't work with Russell Wilson last year was because Russell Wilson went off script a lot, and he would improvise a lot, and Sean Payton hates that. He wants a guy who's going to run the offense, 
like Drew Brees did it in New Orleans, run it the way it's designed, be a very efficient quarterback. So that's why the whole Sean Payton, Russell Wilson marriage ended pretty quickly because it just didn't work out together. Bo Nix is precisely what Sean Payton wants in a quarterback. He's going to run that offense the way it is designed. Um, and that's what he did at Oregon and why he was so successful at Oregon was because he did exactly that. So it makes a lot of sense that Sean Payton would want a guy like Bo Nix to run the offense because that's exactly um, what he did at Oregon. So that I, that was kind of like an open secret for everyone. It was like, yeah, I, I went into the draft thinking, Sean Payton, there's a quarterback he's going to like, it's going to be Bo Nix. So it makes a lot of sense they took him at number 12 overall. Um, and then after that, I mean, Troy Franklin in the fourth round was one of the biggest deals of the draft, honestly. I think if Troy Franklin went in the first round, I would, I would not have hated it. And he ends up going 102nd overall. So also you get him with Bo Nix again. They both went to Oregon together. Yeah. Love that. So I think that's another really good pick. Um, and then I got Audrick Estime later on. Again, Broncos did a solid job in this draft. I love the Troy Franklin pick. I'm fine with the Bo Nix pick. I don't know if he's a long-term answer. Um, I could see him kind of having like a Mac Jones-esque career, maybe a little bit better. Um, I just don't – I don't know how much more he is than just a game manager, honestly. But uh, that's what Sean Payton wants. So that that's kind of, you know, what he is looking for in a quarterback. And if that's what he's looking for, you got the right guy for that, honestly. So it makes a lot of sense in a lot of ways. It just – I don't know. I thought it was solid overall. I don't, I don't think the Broncos, you know, did – besides the Troy Franklin pick, I, don't, I didn't love a lot of the other picks either. So, uh, yeah, I think it was a solid job overall. Do you think that some of these organizations, when, when you take a quarterback, they should prioritize trying to get a receiver – from that team, uh, from the quarterbacks college to get him comfortable, even if it's later in the draft, just so they're more comfortable with a guy they know. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's something you could do. I mean, you got guys, I mean, it's happened before. I mean, Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase at, at Cincinnati, yeah. obviously those two are both special. So it wasn't like it was the, yeah. that, um, it's, not, it's not like a surprise that that worked out, but yeah, you could do that. I, I don't think it's as important as people might put into it, but obviously you do have built in chemistry there, which is great. Um, so yeah, I, I liked it, and, but like like getting Troy Franklin, like I said, it wasn't like they reached for Troy Franklin just to get Bo's guy. It was like, no, that's like the best receiver on the board, and he's like I said, should have been a top forty pick at least in the draft, and you get him at one hundred second overall, crazy. Um, so one of the best steals of the draft, honestly. So um, and also again, like added bonus, like the cherry on top is that he played with Bo Nix in college. So um, yeah, I think it's definitely a strategy you can do. I don't think it's that important as, as some other people do. Um, but yeah, I think it's definitely something that's interesting for, for Denver to do. And I think it's, uh, it could work out for them. Um, Brock Bowers going to the Raiders. It's kind of felt like the can't miss pick, right? Like if, if he's there at that point, either New Orleans, New Orleans, Indy, or, um, the Raiders could have probably taken him and, and been pretty fine. Um, so, uh, but besides Brock Bowers, what do you think? How do you think the Raiders did? Uh, they did pretty good. Uh, I think, you know, Brock Bowers at 13 kind of surprised me, not for the value-wise. I would take Brock Bowers top five or six, and I wouldn't have thought twice about it because I think he's the best player in the draft. But for the Raiders, who needed other positions and they needed um, – they didn't need a tight end. They got Michael Mayer already. But at the same time, like you get the guy who I think might be the best football player in the draft pound for pound. I'm not going to hate that at all, 13 overall. Yeah. So that, it's going to be a fun fit with him and Michael Mayer in that offense. Um they needed other positions clearly, but they still, like I said, they got maybe the best player in the draft. So I can't hate that. Even, even if the, the team fit isn't exactly what I thought it was going to be, but Jackson powers, Johnson, great pick at 44 overall, uh, the best center in the draft, probably in my opinion. And you get him in the second round who could have been a first round pick. That's good. Delmar glaze at third round was maybe the biggest reach of the draft. Honestly, we had him as a late seventh round prospect and he went 77th overall. So like middle third round, didn't love that at all. Um, so after the first two picks, this, this draft kind of fell apart in a lot of ways for Las Vegas. Uh, I like Deca Marion Richardson, Tommy Eichenberg's a, a fine linebacker. He's pretty decent. I mean, other than that, they did whatever. So like the, the Delmar Glaze pick is just the one that kind of derailed this draft and why I didn't love the draft just because I think that was one of the biggest reaches of it. But I mean, the first two picks are the are Brock Bowers and Jackson Powers Johnson. I mean, you got the best tight end in the draft, and the best center in the draft, um, and they could use both of those positions. Uh, or at least Bowers they can use as just an offensive weapon in their offense. So uh, I like those first two. And then after that, it's kind of depth pieces and then a, a major reach in Delmar Glaze. So that's why it's not a, a great draft for me. Uh, but uh, I still love the first two picks, though, which is good. Uh, the Saints, they were the team that I thought about the least going into the draft. I really had they, – they just seemed like the most irrelevant. Um, but them taking Kool-Aid, I would say that's a pretty good pick. I mean, he was, what, the second – cornerback second ranked cornerback in the draft second or third 
yeah. and getting him in the third round, I, I would say that's a really good value pick. Although cornerbacks dropped, I think overall, I don't was there one taken in the first, late in the first. Um, so how would you feel about the Saints here? Uh, great. They did a great job. Uh, Fulanga at 14 was a great pick. That's probably who I would have gone with. Um, Ryan Ramchick kind of looks like his career is winding down with that knee injury. So they could use another tackle in there, and Fulanga is a great player. So ace that. They needed a tackle. That was the biggest need by far was tackle, and they got one in 14, which is what I wanted them to do. Kool-Aid, uh, you mentioned it in the second round. Uh, I thought it was an awesome pick. He's probably my top corner in the draft, and I believe he was like the fifth one taken in the draft. Um, so, yeah, it was a great pick as well. Love that. Even though they don't really need a corner right now, I still love that fit there. Um, Spencer Rattler, fifth round, good. I mean, he could be your – you can see what you have in him once Derek Carr finally stops playing, and you can see if Rattler could be a guy. Probably not, but it's worth taking a swing in the fifth round anyways. I, I thought he would have been a third-round pick, honestly, so getting him in the fifth round is good. And after that, it's whatever. I mean, Bob Means is – a little bit of a reach, but at the same time, fifth round, it's hard to say any guys a reach in the fifth round and later. So that was whatever. And then after that, you know, their other picks were whatever too. But the first three of Fuango, McKinstry, and Rather, that made it like an A-plus draft in my opinion. So even after that, it's whatever the rest of the way. But those first three players, like, are really, really good players. And um, I, I really like what they did uh, in those first three picks. All right, the Colts. I, I'm a Colts fan. Um, at, at first, I, I've actually come around on our draft. I, I – Every, I've seen everything that says we've done great, but I really wish we would have addressed the cornerback position a lot earlier. Um, we took, I mean, we took one in the sixth round, took a couple safeties in the fifth round, um, taking Latu, 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 um, a guy who was medically retired three years ago, who also had the same neck surgeon as Peyton Manning. Makes me nervous. It just does. Uh, I understand you want to take a chance on a guy. I understand he was, you know, skill-wise, the, the best edge rusher in the draft. But your edge doesn't your your rushing doesn't matter when you can't stop a anyone from throwing the ball down the field. Um, but again, I've I've somewhat come around. So, and and I heard you say you think the Colts did great. Um, <laughs> so yeah. uh, refute me. Tell me why I'm wrong. Basically, no, I, I think you have the right idea, man. They they the one reason why and we gave it an A plus on PFF.com. The only reason why I might not give it an A plus is because like you said, it just their biggest need by far is corner, and they didn't take one until the sixth round, and it, like that's. <laughs> They didn't really make a lot of sense to me at all. And um, so at 15, I probably would have gone corner, even though I love Latu. But I'm not going to hate on Latu either, who I thought was a top 10 prospect in the draft. And like I said, he was the best defensive player in college football last year. He was absolutely dominant. So getting him, Adonai Mitchell in the second round is an absolute steal. That was fantastic. Uh, I like some of their other picks too. But the, the one reason why I'm a, I'm a little bit lower than an A+, plus, what we gave him on PFF.com, is just like you said, their biggest team was corner, and they did not address it at all. So I, I hate that. Um, so I thought the Colts could have done a lot more with that, and they just they didn't do it. So um, I would have loved taking a corner like Cooper DeJean um, early if they could have, but uh, or someone else, or like Quinion Mitchell in the first round if they really wanted to do it. I wouldn't have hated that either. But, again, they got two great players in the first two picks, so I'm not going to hate that at all. Um, but I just, again, they, they could have really gone after a corner, and the fact they didn't do it until late day three was not didn't make a lot of sense to me. Yeah, I think the the rationale by Colts fans is they're going to sign a free agent. But from from my understanding of who's out there, there are old men out there, yeah. and that's pretty much it. You have a reunion with Stephon Gilmore, or uh, who, who's the other one? There's another one that's left out there. He's an older guy. It's not Xavier Rose. I don't know why his name keeps coming, but I don't want an old man. I want I, I want the white Jesus of cornerbacks. Okay, yeah. I want Cooper DeGene. Um, I, I don't understand how he dropped, to be honest, and that'll send us a little off topic. Um, but I'm not really sure how he dropped so far. I think he was projected to be a top 15 pick, and suddenly we're looking at him in the mid-second round. Yeah, I think he had a foot injury that held him out of working out until the very end. Um, but I think he's recovered now. So I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't understand either. I think he should have been a first-round pick, and he ended up falling in the second round of the Eagles, which is an unbelievable draft by them. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I thought I thought I really thought he should have been a first round pick. I mean, he's like one of the best football players in this draft. He's so versatile, could play in the slot, could play outside. Um, great run defender, great in coverage, awesome athlete. Like it's just no re real weaknesses on his tape, really. And the fact that he fell in the second round doesn't really make too much sense to me. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I would have taken him. I, I thought he was a perfect scheme fit in Indianapolis too. So if you want to take him at 15 overall, I would not have hated that because I think he's a great fit in that defense, in the zone heavy defense that Gus Bradley runs. Um, but yeah, I mean, just 
they didn't they didn't go after him. So uh, yeah, I I don't know. I didn't I didn't love it. You know, not taking a corner that uh, until very late, but you know, that's what they did. So the Colts traded back in the second round. Would you have taken him over a Donnie Mitchell? Yes, yeah, without question. I, I would have taken Cooper DeJean easily because I thought he was a better prospect and he also has a much bigger need than than receiver. Yeah. So I, I personally would have taken him and not thought twice about it. I even would have traded up to make sure I get Cooper DeJean. I love the fit that much in that defense. They didn't do it, though. So uh, maybe they like their corners a little bit more than people realize, but yeah, I thought, I thought Cooper. That was one of my favorite team fits in the draft was Cooper DeJean to Indy, and then they had an opportunity twice to do it. Uh, they didn't yeah. end up doing it. So, yeah, and and a lot of people mention how we have Kenny Moore, we have Juju Brents, but those guys were hurt. I don't. <laughs> injuries yeah. are a part of it, and you can't rely on them to not be hurt if they were already hurt. Right. Um, so that was the last on the Colts. Uh, Seattle, the first draft post Pete Carroll being the head coach, although I know he is still involved. Byron Murphy out of Texas at 16 was the, the first round pick. Um, h- how are you feeling here? Uh, they're good. They had, uh, Byron Murphy's a good player. They needed to tackle. They need help on the defensive line. They got a good player that's 16. Not my DT one. I would have liked Johnny Newton more, but I'm not gonna. It was close to him and Byron Murphy, so I I, I understand that. Christian Haynes is a good player. Um, as well in the third round, great, great pick there. And after that, they, did, they had some solid picks, nothing too special. So, um, yeah, overall pretty solid job by the Seahawks, getting some guys they needed. They needed help in the interior defensive line. They needed help at, on interior offensive line. And they got two great players in the first two picks. So, uh, yeah, can't hit on that at all from uh, Seattle. Cincinnati. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, uh, well, before you go Cincinnati, let's go. With that. I'm a Ravens guy. What did you think of their they, – they tend to never draft specifically for need, but if you look at who they drafted, it – I think it kind of worked out that way that, you know, they went cornerback. They probably felt like that was their biggest need. They needed to address the offensive line, which really showed some cracks in the AFC championship game. Um, How do you grade their draft? And did you feel like it was maybe a little more based on need than in previous years, or they kind of stick to their guns of best player available? Uh, I thought they pretty stuck to their guns uh, for the most part. I I thought their biggest need was offensive line. So I, I thought they could have taken one in 30 overall. Um, but I, I like their strategy of not doing that and taking Nate Wiggins because the offensive linemen available then weren't really someone I would probably would have prioritized. So um, I like Wiggins. I, I like McKinstry more. Wiggins is really skinny, but he's a great athlete. Um, so I, I like him as a future you know, corner for that team. And then Rosen Gordon in the second round, a little bit higher than where I would have taken him, but he's a, he's a good player. Um, Adisa Isaac's a great player as well in the third round. I think that was a really good pick. Tez Walker, I like that in the fourth round. I love TJ Tampa in the fourth round too. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the Ravens did a pretty solid job overall. and they, they seem to always do a good job in these drafts, and that's why they're continuously in the playoffs. Um, I thought they did another good job this year. No, again, not blown away by them, but um, really, really good players in their first, what, five picks or so. So um, I, I like I liked almost all their picks that they had uh, in, throughout the draft. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, oh. um, so Cincinnati, uh, they took, which again, ESPN has their needs, and they have a little green dot on, on offensive tackle. They took one offensive tackle in the first round and refused to address it further. If I was them, I, I don't understand why they're not taking as almost as many as possible. Um, I mean, Joe Burrow is your guy. Like, he is – and, and he has been ravaged by injury to start his career. I mean, you, you really think about where they could have been if he hasn't had to deal with these injuries the past few years. Like this year, obviously, they weren't a force in the AFC, like a major force in the AFC because of that. Um, so how do you think they did here? I'm seeing a lot of, you know, I mean, they took a couple tight ends, wide receiver, a couple D tackles, um, and some secondary guys. But they, oh, and they took a center in the seventh round. Awesome. Yeah, it, uh, I think it was pretty good. I mean, they got Amarius Mims, who's a, a good player at, at 18. I like that pick. Uh, they have Orlando Brown. They have Trent Brown. And they like, have Amarius Mims, too. They clearly have a type because all three of those guys are massive, massive offensive tackles. Um, yeah. So I like Mims as a developmental guy. He's a freak athlete, too. Um, I really like the pick of Chris Jenkins in the second round, too. They needed a guy who could plug up the run, losing DJ Reader to the Lions. Um, Jenkins is going to be able to do that for them. Jermaine Burton some off field questions for him and you want him to stay out of trouble, but on the field, he's a really good receiver and they got him in the third round. He could have been a second or even a first round pick for some people if he didn't have the off field concerns. So if you get a guy like that in the third round, you just lost Tyler Boyd as well. So he could be pretty much immediately a starter for them, I think with uh, Jamar Chase and T Higgins. Um, So yeah, I like that. 
Uh, I like Eric all a lot in the fourth round. He's one of the best tight ends in the draft. I thought you just got to stay healthy. Um, so you got him in the fourth round. Uh, Matt Lee, ironically enough, I know he's the last pick of the draft, but he's a, he's a really good center in college. I think there's worth betting on um, in the NFL as well. So getting him one of the final picks of the draft was great as well. So yeah, I, you know, overall uh, Cincinnati did a pretty good job. I don't love McKinley Jackson. They got him late third round. Um, and I thought it was a little bit of a reach for them. But otherwise, they had clearly had their needs circled on their roster, and they filled it with some pretty good players overall. So I uh, can't really hate on the Bengals too much in this draft. Again, they didn't blow me away with a lot of picks, but they got some really good players, though. The L.A. Rams shockingly have a pick in the first round in the 2024 draft. I didn't think it was possible. Um, but they took Jared Verse at uh, edge. Again, based on the needs on ESPN, it doesn't look like they, uh, they addressed their picks. But I feel like a lot of what ESPN actually puts out isn't super accurate. It's a very broad spectrum, I guess. Um, but where, where do you think they're standing right now? Uh, I like the pick of verse a lot. They needed, I thought even with Aaron Donald retiring, I thought edge was a bigger need than D tackle because yeah. they have Kobe Turner, who is a really good player at uh, D tackle and they had nothing at edge really. So Jared verse first round. Great. Braden fist, second round. Good. I like it. Problem with that. And why I, I'm lower on this draft is because this is where they really screwed it up. I thought I really like Braden Fisk. I actually interviewed him a couple months ago. Great kid. Uh, I'm really happy for him. He gets played Jared verse again, but they traded up uh, 13 spots in the second round and they traded their second round pick this year and they traded their second round pick next year, um, <laughs> which is just crazy to trade two second round picks for a second round pick. Like that's just like, I hated that, and clearly Les Snead does not give a damn about draft value charts at all. Because he's, like I said, this is their first first round pick they've had since Jared Goff in 2016. 2016 eight yeah. years, dude. Eight freaking years they haven't had a first round pick, which is nuts. Um, so clearly they don't give a damn about you know their value, the draft value charts, whatever. But any draft value chart you can use, any analytics company would tell you that trading two second round picks for a second round pick is pretty terrible. Uh, so hated that. But otherwise, you know, again, I like Braden Fisk, and I think the player is good, and the value of him getting at 39 overall is yeah. good. But the trade was made no sense to me. Um, so don't like that. But Blake Corum is a good player. It will be interesting with him and Kyron Williams for fantasy-wise, how that works out. Cam Kitchens, ball hawk player, like him. Tyler Davis, sixth round, love that. Josh Cardi, the kicker they got, actually is like maybe the best kicker prospect we've seen in a decade. So he's going to be a long, long-term kicker for them. Kickers I think. are important. They are. I think they're a lot more important than people put value on. They are. And he actually has the uh, he has the highest career grade we've ever given to a kicker. He had a 97 career really? grade. So and wow. we've been doing this for 10 years now. So he's, like I said, once in a decade type of talent, Josh Cardi is. And he actually wasn't even the first kicker taken. Uh, Will Record was uh, from Alabama. But, um, yeah, overall, solid draft for the Rams. I, I like Jared Verse a lot. I like some of the other players they got. I like Braden Fisk. I just thought the trade was terrible. Um, but other than that, that – that trade is probably a big reason why I don't like this draft more. But again, it, the players they got were good. It's just the the trading away next year's second round pick. Just it, that's for another second round pick. Just I hate that. I hate that a lot. So well, I, they, I don't love that from Boston. They, they must be feeling pretty confident. I mean, the, you look at some of their their biggest offensive weapons right now are guys they took in late rounds, right? Like Kyron Williams, Co uh, Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua. They hit struck gold on last year. So maybe they just feel like, you know, the early rounds of the draft are overrated. I guess. Yeah, they probably really start, trust their scouting department, and they should them. They've done a great job with it. But yeah, I just I hate just burning burning picks like that. Just yeah. for like, oh, we really like this guy, so we're gonna just trade the farm for him. A, a D tackle, nonetheless. I mean, like a quarterback yeah. like that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't love. Again, I love Braden Fisk. I just trading two second round picks for a second round pick is just that's that's bad. That's bad uh, process there by Los Angeles. I thought. Mm -hmm. I think something they're not talking about either is is the quarterback issue. I mean, Matt Stafford is getting up there, right? He's he's had that. What was it? I think he had a neck injury as well. Um, that was an issue. And you have Jimmy Garoppolo, who most handsome guy in football, but as as an actual quarterback, I mean, we can't expect much out of him in the next couple of years. And we know next year the quarterback mar or the quarterback draft is going to be lackluster, at, I guess at best to say. Um, so you think they're like. They're sitting with, with Stafford or Garoppolo for the next two years. They're confident they're going to play. Yeah, I think I think they will. I mean, Stafford, like I said, has got the elbow issue. But uh, otherwise, he's uh, he's getting out there in age anyways. they got Stetson Bennett right there as well. I mean, 
I don't know. I just he seems to not exist. What is going on with that guy? Yeah, I never <laughs> thought he, he seems to always be a, a you know a star a quarterback that's gonna be a backup forever. But yeah, maybe next year they're gonna address quarterback. But they seem to be going all in right now, so it makes sense to get Brand- Jared first there. But uh, yeah, getting a quarterback is definitely something they're gonna be looking at probably in the next few years, though for sure. Yeah, um, Miami Chop Robinson, great name. Great name, especially for an edge rusher of all things. Like you, got, you got to chop some hands away if you want to get if you want to get around the edge. Um, but the, I feel like they, I don't know what what did you where did they miss where did they hit and with Miami? Yeah, Chop is great. Uh, super athlete. I mean, it makes sense. Miami prioritizes athletes in this draft, and they got one in Chop Robinson, who's one of the best athletes at edge defender. Really good pass rusher too. He's just kind of he's winning mainly off athleticism right now, but he's been really really good at that uh, in college. So hopefully he can develop more in the NFL. So I like that. He won't be a starter immediately either because they got Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips. You can kind of develop him a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. Patrick Paul, fine pick, a little higher than I would take it, but it's fine. Um, he was a really good pass blocker this past year though. Uh, Jalen Wright is makes so much sense because he's like the fastest yeah. running back in the draft and. You, Give him to that fastest offense in the league. Um, I thought getting him in the fourth round was a little bit of a steal. It was a great steal, and it makes complete sense that Miami's a team to take him because that's exactly <laughs> what they prioritize his skill position is, is speed, and nobody's faster at running back in this draft than, uh, than Jalen Wright. <laughs> so that makes a lot of sense. I, I think he honestly he's going to push Mostert and uh, A-Chain for touches pretty quickly. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's like the top back there pretty quickly either. So I, I really like him. I love, love, love Malik Washington out of Virginia. I think he's a – third round talent and they got him in the sixth round um i think he could be their starting slot receiver for a long time alongside tyree kill and jalen waddle love malik washington i think that was one of the, my favorite picks of the draft um and he should have been a lot higher um so yeah overall muhammad Kamara, great player as well love him in the fifth round um taj washington has been unbelievably productive for usc even though he's not that big of a player and he was caleb williams number one receiver last year so got him in the seventh round too um overall was pretty good draft for Miami. I actually, I liked a lot of their picks. They're big swings for the fences with Chop Robinson and Patrick Paul. But uh, otherwise they, they did some, uh, some other really good things. I love, like I said, Malik Washington in the sixth round is one of my favorite steals of the draft. So I, I love that. Philly seemed to really boost their, their defense and in a year that was considered a very big down year. I mean, they had a collapse at the end of the season and they're just right back here. I don't know how the NFL allowed them to get Cooper to Gene. I mean, they already have a great white safety. Now you have the great white cor- cornerback as well. Um, but they, I think they had a great draft. They seemed to address almost all the necessary issues. Um, and they also extended A.J. Brown, which I think that A.J. Brown contract is going to be a disaster. I think those big extensions for especially somewhat aging wide receivers are really, really not good, and they come back to bite you. But I think they're they're definitely in that win-now mode, and I think they had a great – they did a great job. Yeah, they did, they did a plus job. Uh, honestly, their biggest need going into tonight was uh, going to the draft. I should say was corner and getting younger at corner because Darius Slay and James Bradbury getting up there in age, and they got at least in PFF's opinion, they got the top two corners in the draft in Quinion Mitchell and Cooper Um So getting him, those two players were outstanding. Quinion's a great pick at twenty two. Cooper is an unbelievable pick at forty. Uh, so love that. Um, other than that, Jeremiah Trotter Jr., awesome pick of the fifth round. He's one of the top linebackers in the draft. I would have taken him probably third round. Um, so great pick there. And also a really cool story because his dad was a former all-pro linebacker for the Eagles back in the day. So now Trotter, his son, gets to play for the Eagles now, which is really cool. And That's I amazing. love I love Johnny Wilson, sixth round. Johnny Wilson has some issues with his hands for sure, and he's got to play bigger. But he's a massive receiver, like six foot seven, 240 pounds, can move really well for that size. He's got a really high ceiling. I thought he was going to be a fourth-round pick, and you got him late sixth round. So love that as well. So Philly overall had an unbelievable draft, and I was a big fan of a lot of things they did. Yeah, that makes me feel old because I remember very well watching Jeremiah Trotter Sr. growing up, and crazy to see all the sons of these players. Hey, quick question. What is the best name in the draft, you know, in key and peel style? That's a good question. Favorite name of this year's Ooh, draft? Good question, man. I think the reason why you're asking me is probably Jalex Hunt, right? The the Houston Christian edge defender that the Eagles took as well. Uh, a, well, uh, just I mean, yeah, Kool Aid was. Oh, Kool Aid, Kool Aid's the answer. Kool Aid is the answer. Yeah, Kool-Aid, yeah, yeah. He's he's the answer. I think, like I say, he's the best corner in the draft. I thought, and you know, obviously, 
corners with cool names have worked before with uh, with Sauce Gardner. So, um, yeah, I think Kool Aid's probably the answer. Yeah, so that's, that's probably who I would go with. And, and speaking of father son, second round, Bengals get Chris Jenkins. Father uh, played for yep. Carolina, was a part of that 2003 Super Bowl team. Uh, so just really, really cool to see the uh, generational, obviously Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, I'm sure I'm leaving out quite a few, but yeah, uh, Brendan, Brendan Rice is Jerry Rice's son too. So, oh, yeah. right, right. Yeah. 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 So pretty yeah, cool. To see them. There are a lot of them. Joe Alstad played in the NFL. He's an all pro tackle, uh, for a long time. I'm trying to think. Right, McCaffrey, Luke, Luke, Luke McCaffrey. McCaffrey, Luke McCaffrey yeah. yeah. Uh, oh God, there's another one. There's others too. I'm, I'm blanking right now. Um, yeah, there's, there's been a lot though, man. It's been it's been cool to see a lot of these guys that we grew up watching um, now all of a sudden have these sons now in the NFL. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a cool uh, cool storyline to watch. Yeah, we're gonna skip a few. Um, we already talked about the Jags, the Lions. I I'll just get I'll get your quick grades because I want to talk about the Bills and Chiefs um, because we always talk about the Bills and Chiefs. Um, but what, what do you think about the Lions? Uh, good. No, they did a good job. I thought they got uh, – Taron Arnold was a solid pick for them at 24. They needed to get younger at corner. They got another one in the second round, Ennis Rakestraw. I can't tell you anything about Gian- Giovanni Manu, the fourth-round tackle out of University of British Columbia. Uh, clearly, they like him. Sione Vaki is a really fun player. He can play safety. He can play running back. They actually announced him as a running back. I think he's better as a safety. So, he might be a versatile player for Dan Campbell to use. Uh, Christian Mahogany, six rounds great as well. So, yeah, I think the Lions did a pretty good, solid job in this draft, I thought. The Packers took a quarterback in the seventh round, which they just – they are addicted to taking quarterbacks when they already have a young, uh, a very good quarterback at the start. Um, but how do you think they did? Yeah, they did good. I, I thought Michael Pratt was a solid pick. I kind of hate it as a Penn State fan because, I mean, Sean Clifford's job as a backup quarterback is in jeopardy uh, right now. But um, otherwise, they did a solid job. You know, Jordan Morgan's pretty good. Edron Cooper I like a lot. I love Marshawn Lloyd in the third round. He's a really, really good running back prospect, I thought. Um, I love Kalen King, too. I mean, took Michael Pratt uh, at, at the end of the draft, but also Kalen King was one of the last picks of the draft. He was a guy that I projected as a first-round pick entering the season, had a disastrous year. Then he had a bad senior bowl, bad combine, really just an all-around all bad year for Kalen King. But you turn on the 2022 mm-hmm. tape, he's a first-round pick based off that tape alone. So you get him one of the final picks of the draft. He fell way further than I thought he should have. Um, and, again, like I said, he had a really, really bad year. But if you could bounce back, man, you get like a, a first round caliber player in the seventh round, like just based off the one bad year and obviously not a great athlete either. But I don't know. I, I thought it was, was a really good swing for the fences when usually those seventh round picks, you're just taking whoever and it doesn't really matter. Kalen King was one I was like, no, I, I like that because he's, he's worth a shot at least just uh, based off the 2022 tape alone. The Bucks. Uh, what do you think they how do you think they did? Um, I think they did a good job. I thought they got uh, Graham Barton was good. Uh, Braz was a good player. McMillan I really like in the third round. Bucky Irving's a really, really fun running back. He's not athletic and he's not big, but he just breaks tackles and he's a great pass catcher. So um, a lot like Theo Riddick, I think. He's going to have like that kind of impact in the NFL and get him in the fourth round is a really good player. So, yeah, overall, Tampa Bay did a good job. I thought, you know, Graham Barton I, I really like in the draft. He can play anywhere on the offensive line, play all five positions. Um, yeah, I think they did a pretty good job overall. All right, the Chiefs take Xavier Worthy. Now, everyone was freaking out about how, and I love to make the jokes, too, about how the Bills trade, you know, they trade back with the Chiefs. They, they did that with Patrick Mahomes. Obviously, they weren't going to take Patrick Mahomes when the Chiefs took Patrick Mahomes. Um, I mean, the Bills weren't going to take Xavier Worthy anyways, right? Like, I don't, I don't think they would have. I don't think they missed out on anything. I think maybe you helped them get better, but... Ricky Pearsall, I feel like Ricky Pearsall is going to San Francisco anyways. So I feel like they would probably get worthy at 32. So there was really no reason to trade up. Yeah, they clearly loved him. They, you know, they've been searching for the, the Tyreek Hill replacement for a long time now. Um, you know, Hill's biggest asset is the speed, obviously. You can get the fastest player in combine history and Xavier Worthy. He ran a 4-2-1 in the 40s. So I'm lower on Worthy. I, I think he's more of a late second-round talent. But for the Chiefs, it makes a lot of sense considering what they need in that offense. So I'm not going to hate on that pick too much, but he just he's so slight. He's only like 160 pounds, and he has serious drop issues. Um, and like that's what plagued the, rec- the Chiefs receivers last year too. So it was like, yeah. I'm, I, I it could work, and it, most likely in Kansas City with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, it's going to work. But yeah. uh, I just 
there are, there are a lot of other receivers I liked more than Xavier Worthy. Like, Ladd McConkey in that offense would have been great. I just – Xavier Worthy's a big boomer bust player. But, again, you get him in a situation like Kansas City, is probably going to work. So, um, I like that. And, overall, the, they did a solid job in the draft of that overall. I, th- I think, you again, you can equate it to the Patriots, where they're going to find a way to exploit the speed, right? Yeah. I'm, they're going to find a way. Problem is, you're probably not going to be able to throw it deep to them too often for, like, some sort of ball hawk situation. Um, so I don't think it's – I think Bills fans were treating it as a Greek tragedy no. that they traded up to get this guy, but it was not whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a problem that they got him, but he is not Tyreek Hill. I think Tyreek Hill was – body-wise, he was a lot more muscular. He looks like just one big muscle. That's yeah. all he is. Xavier Worthy is much more strung together with toothpicks and – dental floss like he's just so skinny but again he can have a large impact on the chiefs that's one of the few teams that he actually would be able to because of the drop issues um so i'm i again i feel very validated today i feel like i'm i'm a little smarter than i was before (laughs) um and then we'll wrap up um with dallas san francisco and the carolina panthers um dallas taking an offensive tackle i feel like again and and the dak prescott discussion is crazy to me that people say they would not take him as their quarterback well i think about 20 teams in the league would probably take him as their quarterback even if he is dak prescott yeah i agree Uh, he's probably like a top 10 ish quarterback in the league so yeah it's it's weird that situation is going on right now um who knows what happens man he's he's playing he seems like he's not gonna sign an extension he's gonna play the last year of his contract and we'll see what happens after that when he becomes a free agent the Guyton pick in the first round, I really don't love. Uh, I, I think, I don't know. I, I thought he was more like a third round player. He's a very developmental guy, um, really good athlete, but man, that's a that's a developmental guy. And just they needed immediate starters, and they're going to probably play him immediately. And I just I'm scared for that for Dallas. So didn't love that Cooper Beebe in the third round. I loved that he was the best one of the best guards in the draft, and they got him in the third round. It's great. Overall, though, the other players I got were solid. I just the Guyton pick I really did not like at all at twenty nine. So um, that that held me back from you know being higher on this draft. But uh, Cooper Beebe does does help a lot because I think he's a really good player and they got him in the third round, so that's good. Um, and then San Francisco they take Ricky Pearsall at thirty one. Um, there's a lot of discussion around Florida how they're going to be horrible this year, which obviously they have one of the hard. I think they have the hardest schedule in. Um, in the country and probably maybe in history, depending on how those teams pan out. Um, I, I guess this would be more of a discussion about Florida because it feels like their head coach is a very good recruiter and he's just a horrible coach besides that. Well, what do you think about that? Yeah, uh, it's a big year for them. Billy Napier is uh, on the hot seat for sure. And like you said, they play, you know, when the preseason rankings come out and I actually put out some on pff.com. I had to count them again, but I think they play like seven or eight of my top 25 teams in the country, which is like, that's tough, man. When you, when you need to win seven or eight games to probably keep your job, to, to make sure you win those, is like that's going to be really hard. So I, I don't think Billy Napier is going to be there for much longer because I think it's going to be another below 500 season. I'd be surprised if they even get to six wins, honestly. Um, but, yeah, like I said, they're recruiting well. They, they literally just brought in the number one quarterback in the country coming out of high school. So – they have a future there. It's just right now the present doesn't look too uh, too nice right now. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But, yeah, you're right. Billy Napier is certainly on one of the hottest seats in the country right now for sure. Yeah, they have they have Miami, Texas, and then they play Sanford, Texas a and Mississippi State, UCF, Tennessee, Kentucky, Georgia, Texas, LSU, Ole Miss, and Florida State. Yeah. I mean, that is a gauntlet of gauntlets. Like, I think at any era in college football – you could throw that schedule out and say, "Holy yeah. shit, this team is going." No, yeah, I mean, if they win seven games. Insane. That's a win. It's gonna be insane. And then they're gonna—they're probably gonna go four and eight or five and seven again. That's just—he's gonna have to win eight or nine games to probably keep his job. He's just not—I—I'd I, be floored if, if Florida got anywhere close to that. So, yeah. And then finally, we're gonna wrap up with the Carolina Panthers. Um, I don't understand why they just didn't take all offensive linemen. They actually didn't take a single offensive lineman in this draft, which is insane. Yeah, absolutely crazy that they didn't do that. Yeah, I liked I liked their strategy of, of getting Bryce some weapons because I think that was probably the bigger need than offensive line. But I agree with you; they still need to take some offensive linemen. Uh, but I like 
Leggett, Leggett 32 is a little high for me. I love, I would have loved Ladd McConkey there. Like, again, the Chargers really got a steal for him in, in second round, but would have loved that. Jonathan Brooks makes sense because Miles Sanders is just not their starting running back in the future. So getting Brooks, who might be the best running back in the draft, is makes sense. Sanders, great pick in the fourth round. I thought he was the second best tight end in the draft, and they got him in the fourth round. It's a great pick there. I would have liked more. I would have liked more weapons, though. I would have liked more weapons and more offensive linemen. I, I thought I wouldn't have hated the, the entire draft. They just went offense. They just went offensive line and weapons because, like, you need to figure out whether or not Bryce Young is a quarterback in the future, and you're not going to do that with the supporting cast you have right now. So they, they definitely improved the supporting cast, but they could have done even more, I thought. So overall, Carolina – Okay, draft. Nothing. Nothing crazy. I guess we didn't talk at all about Buffalo, so I don't. I don't want to leave Buffalo out as well. What? How do you feel about Buffalo? Yeah, I liked. Uh, I like Keon Coleman. He's clearly one of the funniest players in this draft. Uh, he. I'm worried about him as a separator, which is gonna be interesting to see in Buffalo. Uh, but I, I think he's a really, really good player. Otherwise, but his separation ability, which I think is is the key to being a good receiver in the league nowadays, that's that's his biggest weakness for sure. He's just he's not very fast or explosive. And not a great round runner either. But other than that, he's a good player. Um, Cole Bishop is a little bit of a reach for me, but I like him. Uh, Dwayne Carter, good player. Uh, Cedric Van Pram is a good player. Uh, Edafuan Olafosio in the fifth round was a steal. I love him. I think he's one of the best linebackers in the draft. So getting him in the fifth round was great. So, yeah, overall, Buffalo did a solid job. And I, I, I would have liked other receivers there. Again, I'll bring up Lyle McConkey. Uh, but Keon Coleman, I'm not going to hate on too much. You know, I think he hopefully could work out with Josh Allen next year. And then, um, well, I see Travis Clayton, England. Is that right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> in England, um, who's like former soccer and rugby player, so they're just taking a shot at him. Uh, I, I don't want to keep any more of your time, but I want to talk a little bit about the Brady, the Brady roast. Uh, we'll probably talk about two minutes. They say Aaron Hernandez, Brady says nothing. They talk about O.J. Simpson, Brady says nothing. They talk about Giselle, Brady says nothing. But when they talk about Robert Kraft getting massages, Brady says something. What do, what do you think? That's insane to me that of, of all the jokes, that was the one. He said, don't fucking do that again. Yeah, he uh, he clearly loves Bob Kraft, man. And they clearly have a very <laughs> special relationship. Um, yeah, they went, they went hard in a lot of areas. I did not expect them to go crazy at and, uh Kudos to them, honestly. I uh, made it very entertaining, more entertaining than I thought it was going to be, honestly. So, um, yeah, the, the roast overall was great. You know, I, I had a lot of fun watching with my buddy PJ. Um, yeah, that was a really, uh, really fun roast, and they did a good job with it. I thought. Mike, what did you think? Yeah, I thought it was pretty vicious. I mean, roasts by nature are <laughs> vicious, but they. Uh, I mean, you know, it was almost like, you know, so, some of these celebrities that they do, it's kind of they've already been beaten down enough and it's kind of just, you know, it's repetitive, but it felt like they really wanted to tear Brady down. It was like, this is their first chance to kind of get at the golden boy. So it, it, it felt a little extra spicy and it was just fun to see a lot of the um, NFL people in the crowd. You saw Jim Harbaugh and Charles Woodson, Kyle Shanahan and Rich Eisen. I mean, you name it. It just, they had tons of been obviously all Brady's, you know, former Patriots teammates as well and uh i i thought drew bledsoe did a nice job a little, little salty understandably yeah. he had better comedic chops than a lot a lot of the other patriots i mean obviously edelman had some edgy stuff but randy moss stick to your day job i thought the belichick joke about the he was like i'm gonna do your job and he's like rob stop doing your job <laughs> i don't know why i thought that one was funny but it was you know, kudos to Belichick too for also being a good yeah. sport because he took a lot of heat and especially about his unemployment and whatever. And uh, so, yeah, it was. Uh, I, I'd love to see them do more athlete roasts. Yeah, I, I really imagined from the the if any of you watched The Office, the Michael Scott roast when when everyone was writing their roast about Michael Scott, they were just oh man, that's what I imagine. Especially like Julian Edelman and Rob were doing. They were ready. I mean, they. I feel like, I mean, Brady was so buttoned up for, what, 20 years? And then in Tampa, he started to open up a little bit, and this was like the opening of the floodgates. Yeah. So I'm glad they did this. It really did humanize Brady, in my opinion, a little bit more, which over yeah. the past few years, he has been more humanized. Well, his plastic surgery dehumanized him oh, a little bit, but God. other than that, yeah. he <laughs> it looked good, weird. Was... I'd kill to look like that, honestly, when I get that old, so. Yeah, uh, no, true. Brady. Brady did good. I, I actually thought Brady his uh, his bit at the end was really good too. So uh, that's the only um, part I've yet to see. I'm, I paused it at that. So interesting. Okay, he did Love he did to... a really good job. He did a really yeah. good job too. Um, yeah, I thought everyone did a great job. Honestly, like, but, but 
besides Ben Affleck and uh, right. ben yeah, Affleck that, was, was that was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. But yeah, other than that, um, yeah, I thought everyone else did a pretty solid job overall, and they, they didn't really hold back either. Which I was scared for that. I thought they're going to hold back a little bit, especially as teammates. Uh, and they didn't, so they did a great job. And I love. Bel- I, I didn't think Belichick was going to go to it, and the fact that he did go and, and spoke was great. So I was yeah. really happy about that too. And what was Kim Kardashian doing there? What was her purpose there? There was no reason. I don't know. I, there was a rumor they dated for a little bit after he got divorced, but like, I mean, I don't. It's just like a big. A lot of those people are just big names. They're just like throwing out there, just to have yeah. out there. But yeah, it, it's uh, there are some weird ones for sure. But yeah, the Ben Affleck one was the one, the only one that I was like, oh, that that was weird. I, I didn't like yeah. it at all. But yeah, but we are we are the people at our keyboards saying things about Ben Affleck. So I guess he's right about that. Uh, true, true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Um, but make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, Max, you guys hit. Did you have your record of concurrent viewers or total viewers on your draft sc- stream? Um, what was it? Uh, we had. I was on day three of the show, and we had like, oh, I think it was. We ended up at like a hundred thousand, not to- like live viewers, but a hundred thousand views total, which is really good for day three. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, yeah, really. Uh, PFF draft show really, they really killed it this year. I was really happy for that. Yeah, congrats. Um, great job. You're always putting out good stuff. Um, go check out the PFF College Football Show. Go check out Draft America, and we will see you on Monday.